to be predominantly behind the vaccination campaign, happy to be vaccinated and extraordinarily tolerant of lockdown and its rules. But there has been a vocal and at times disruptive minority who've made their antipathy to both vaccines and COVID rules strongly felt. Tonight we ask who makes up that group, what brings them and binds them together and where their other allegiances lie. Mariana Spring, our disinformation correspondent, has brought us this report. Why are you here with masks on? You know we don't wear them. On Saturday, thousands took to the streets of central London in what was billed as a protest to unite for freedom. Placards talked about opposition to COVID restrictions, so-called vaccine passports, and criticism of government ministers. All of these are legitimate areas for discussion. However, at the march, we saw evidence that some of the legitimate policy arguments are increasingly muddled in with, and sometimes even a gateway to, extreme conspiracy theories and threats. Matt Hancock, Wissy Ballance, Boris Johnson, they will be hung under treason. I can guarantee you that. These conspiracies have been shared on social media, including the messaging app Telegram, where the march was predominantly organised. Protesters question whether the pandemic is real, suggest vaccines are part of a global genocide orchestrated by Microsoft founder Bill Gates, and promote QAnon, a conspiracy that believes Donald Trump is waging a secret war against a cabal of elites. The common theme? That the pandemic is part of a sinister plan being orchestrated by powerful people, and that the media are complicit in a cover-up. None of you have reported on the truth since day one. You're complicit in crimes against humanity. A big group formed around us. Members of this movement are increasingly frustrated at the slow pace of the return to normality. But once restrictions do end, where will the movement's energy go? I went to Darlington to meet one committed protester. Graham, who works in property, had never attended protests before the pandemic and wasn't really interested in politics. Now he's organising minibuses to take people to rallies in central London. Well, I think it's, to be honest, it's a psychological attack on society and I, you, can, you can just see it unfolding. I'm not going to tell you if the coronavirus is real or not. Graham first got involved on Facebook, where he watched videos like this one. But he soon found himself in Telegram channels rife with conspiracies, without any evidence, that discuss sinister global plots, worlds apart from mainstream political debates. The powers of the world that are pushing this just basically want a bigger piece of the pie. And um, they, want, they want more power, they want more wealth and more control. The economy has been hit really badly by COVID uh, yeah. and the government's come under a lot of criticism. Um, it overall doesn't seem to have been a very good thing for anyone. Does that not contradict the idea that it's all some master plan that these people are coordinating? When you say it hasn't been good for anybody, I would say people lower down the food chain. You don't really see it affecting the globalist elite, who I consider to like be pulling a lot of the strings. The overwhelming consensus from doctors and scientists on all sides of the political spectrum from all over the world is that the vaccines are safe and there have been discussions about blood clots or allergic reactions and other side effects. Does that not reassure you at all? I'm all for vaccinations, but for this particular one, I think it's been rushed out far too quickly. Again, I think it's about power and control. I think it goes a lot deeper than just getting people vaccinated. Whether there's higher agendas such as depopulation and that kind of thing, yeah, that's a debate for another day, I think. These claims the pandemic is an organised plot to reduce the world's population are contrary to evidence and shared frequently in anti-lockdown channels on Telegram. These channels also feature posts broadcast by far-right activists like Tommy Robinson. For Graham, these telegram groups have become a community. Others join channels for dating and house shares for those who believe they are awake to the truth about the pandemic. Going forwards in six months' time, do you think that you'll still be a part of this movement? Do you think that it will, it will still exist? Or do you think that as life goes back to normal, 
you won't want to or need to be a part of it anymore? I don't think life will go back to normal if if the government get their way kind of thing and what they're pushing for. So in some ways this has become they, like a political movement for they, you? They don't, they don't want it back to normal. They want, they want a, a new normal. Over 200 miles away in Milton Keynes, I meet Kate, a trainee psychologist. We spoke about why she planned to attend the protest. Because I feel strongly that our freedom is being stripped away from us incrementally and has been since the start of the pandemic. This won't stop. Lots of people's lives have effectively been ruined or they've had their last special moment with their loved one taken away from them. That can never be repaired. Like Graham, Kate doesn't deny the virus is real. She has also joined the same channels on Telegram. Despite her interest in mainstream politics, Kate had toyed with other conspiracies for years about 9-11, the financial crisis, and QAnon. I think it's a nefarious agenda to strip away our freedom. For you, how do the vaccines fit into this nefarious plot? They're either a depopulation thing, or they're simply, they might have chips in. I've debated in my head, are they putting tiny chips in, compliance chips, basically, which is going to make the whole thing easier when they need us all to comply? I don't know, I can't decide, I don't trust it at all. And having had COVID, and recovered, I've got antibodies now, so I won't be having it. There's no evidence that there's a microchip. This isn't a How would you so kind of, yeah, no, just with the mic microchip or depopulation mm. agenda, there's no evidence to support those ideas. When Why you talk you... about evidence, it's a funny thing, scientific evidence, because I'm doing a science yeah. degree at the moment, and it's, um, <laughs> it's very pick or choose with evidence. Experts are concerned about the legacy that movements like this one yeah. might leave. Sadly, for a lot of people, it's very difficult to get out of these kind of worldviews and ideologies once you're in them. That's not just because you're surrounded by that disinformation day in and day out, but also because it becomes your social network and your community. So we certainly need to be aware not just of the disinformation angle here, but also of the extremism angle and the effect that might have both on the targets of extremist groups, so minority communities or those who are vulnerable to attack, uh, but also uh, more broadly to the radicalisation to violence that we might see alongside that. Unite and fight, freedom. Back at the march, Graham says he doesn't Life condone the aggression choice. some protesters have shown towards us, nor does Kate. But it's clear as the movement has gained momentum, several committed to the cause are increasingly hostile to those who challenge their idea of freedom. As the UK moves towards the next phase of the pandemic, several issues are up for debate. But for Graham, Kate, and many in these crowds, this has become about more than COVID-19. Mariana Spring with that report. Dear England, wrote Gareth Southgate in a letter to the